Energy and financial stocks have been top industry sector performers. So does it continue? And cryptocurrencies are still in correction mode. Will they find their mojo? We're going to examine all of that with actionable ETF ticker symbols and the big picture coming up next. Stick with me. I'm Ronda Leggy with ETF Guide TV. Thank you so much for joining me. It's great to see you. I've got some charts that I want to share with you on today's program. It's been a busy week. We just published a new ETF battles with two genomic slash biotech ETFs going head to head, ArcG versus Genom. If you missed it, check it out. This upcoming week, we've got another awesome, awesome battle. This time, a triple header between three dividend ETFs. It's iShares versus Schwab versus Vanguard. It's going to be a slugfest, so do not miss it. Now be sure to subscribe to ETF Guide TV if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button. That way, all of these new episodes, once we drop them, they will automatically hit your inbox. So be sure to turn on your notifications. Now, don't forget to check out my viewer resources section below in the description area. I've got online classes, I've got ebooks that are free, I've also got a portfolio grading service. And so I encourage you to take full advantage of these tools. I built them specifically to help you to improve your investment results with the main goal of helping you to have a profitable outcome. So without further ado, let's take a look at uh, some charts that I've been working on here that I need to share with you. We'll begin with uh, the one here that I like the most. When we talk about the total U.S. stock market, I like to dissect the market and see what's going on underneath the hood. And you can see this reflected in this particular chart because it tells us right now that mid and small cap stocks are the hot spot. We've got IJR, which tracks a small cap S&P 600. And then we got MDY, which tracks the mid cap 400. And both are outperforming the S&P 500 by a comfortable margin. Now, some of those leverage ETF tickers Targeting small and mid caps like TNA and MIDU are also performing very strongly. So keep an eye out on those. I've got uh, some charts coming up a little bit later, uh, looking at some other leveraged ETFs targeting specific sectors. So uh, we'll take a look at that. This next chart takes a look at inflation from another angle. We all know that inflation has been higher. Uh, I've charted broad commodity ETFs like ticker symbol USCI. Well, here's a head-to-head -head look at two specific commodities within the entire group. We've got copper versus gold. And look at copper blowing away the performance of gold with a 28% year-to-date gain. And copper is an important commodity to monitor because so many products use copper as a major input. And if copper prices are shooting higher like they are right now, well, that leads to higher prices in many products and goods that use copper as an input. Now, here's another bigger picture look at that industrial metals versus precious metals. Of course, industrial metals includes copper along with those others like nickel and tin and zinc. And they're outperforming precious metals pretty healthily and pretty mightily. GLT GLTR is represented here, and that tracks a basket of physical commodities uh, or precious metals. We've got gold, silver, palladium, and platinum all inside GLTR. And you can see copper has just been, or um, industrial metals have just been absolutely on fire since the start of the year, and they have outperformed majorly. Now, I have not charted this, but if we look at the one-year chart, you will see that precious metals have actually performed a little bit better than industrial metals. So again, it depends a lot on the time frames we're looking at. Most of the charts that I do for you on these weekly updates for markets are usually year-to-date uh, snapshots. So just keep that in mind. This next chart takes a look at the hottest performing sector ETFs of 2021. And which ones are they? Well, here's the ticker symbols. We've got GUSH, FAST, and ERX. Now, GUSH and ERX follow the energy and gas exploration sectors with 200% daily bullish leverage. And then FAS tracks financial stocks with triple or 300% daily leverage. Now, all three of these ETFs has gained over 100% year to date. This is where the upward or bullish momentum is. We got GUSH, though, 
is the winner among all three with a delicious 150% year-to-date gain. Now, these things move fast up and down, so just keep that in mind uh, whenever you're trading uh, leveraged ETFs. I've also got some more tips for you on that in a second. Our next chart looks at crypto trusts, which are linked to Ethereum and Bitcoin, and they are right now in corrective mode. As, as you can see from this chart, they have been that way over the past several weeks and months. ETHE is still leading the pack on a year-to-date basis. You can see the uh, performance here uh, up 75, just a nudge over 75% year-to-date. That's a pretty good performance return. It's better than BitW and GBTC. And uh, if we go out a little bit longer and look at uh, a, a less compressed time horizon, if we go out let's say the past year, you'll see a quite different picture. You'll see GBTC and BitW are, are up much more than ETHE, which over the past year has barely budged. And by the way, congratulations to Canada for beating the US with the world's ver first, first true Bitcoin ETF. That's ticker symbol BTCC. My theory on why Canada beat the US is because Canadian regulators take shorter coffee and donut breaks versus U.S. regulators. So that's my theory. Uh, unfortunately, it has yet to gain industry-wide acceptance, but I don't really care. I'm sticking with it. Our next chart looks at the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index, and we see a lot of fear which is probably good if you're a long-term accumulator, right? You want to see lower prices so you can buy at lower prices. Um, and so buy fear, sell greed, and repeat until you end up with more money than everybody else. You win! Our next chart looks at uh, S&P 500 industry sectors. There's 11. And did you notice what the trend is saying? Well, we told you earlier that XLE and XLF, which track energy and financials, those are the two hot areas. And we linked ERX and FAS, the leveraged ETFs that uh, target those sectors. We already highlighted that. But you'll notice that all 11 industry sectors or groups are in positive territory on a year-to-date basis. And that is quite positive from a breadth perspective. When you see the broad participation by all industry groups, uh, that is something you definitely want to see if you're a bull. One other thing I will mention about leverage that I think is very important is you want to use leverage if you're going to do it in sectors or markets that are sharply trending in the exact same direction that you're trading. So if the market is, let's say, neutral or trending in the opposite direction that you want to be heading in, well, then it's advisable not to be using leverage. That is, again, Ron's rule of thumb when it comes to trading with leveraged ETFs. I think it'll help you stay out of trouble. And more importantly, I think it'll help you make some money. I'm going to end today's program with something really different. And I know that you like charts and graphs, just like I do, that are ridiculous. Now, that's a self-invented word which combines crazy and ridiculous. Yes, it's ridiculous. You only hear that kind of stuff here on ETF Guide TV. So here's a ridiculous graph illustrating how there's now over $20 billion stuck in S&P 500 index funds that charge more than a half a percent. Isn't that just incredible? Now, the question I've got is, are you one of these people, these comatose people that owns one of these S&P 500 funds that are overcharging? Look at this list, because if you own any of these, these mutual funds tracking the S&P 500 index, then you're overpaying because there's so many other choices. Low cost choices, cheaper than this, that uh, that give you that same exposure. And if you're a real cheapo, and I know some of you are, Fidelity even has a a menu of index funds that uh, have zero percent expense ratios. Can you believe that? And so the combined annual savings, if these thirty one funds were moved to an S and P five hundred index fund with an expense ratio of zero percent would be over $125 million annually. Again, that's just ridiculous. These are the sort of avoidable multi-million dollar mistakes that people make every day 
that the portfolio report card I invented catches. And if your investment portfolio has a flaw like this, or maybe something else that you've uh, completely missed, well, the report card is going to go on a seek and destroy mission. It's going to find that problem and it's going to help you eliminate those obstacles hindering your investment performance. So what are the key takeaways from today's program? Well, smaller stocks are beating their larger peers. So tactically speaking, that's been the, the right place to be if you want to overweight those mid caps and small caps. We gave you a couple of ETF tickers uh, in the leverage space that do that, TNA, MIDU, the unleveraged versions, MDY and IJR. Commodities remain hot. Inflation is up and those energy commodities are doing quite well. But let's not forget the discussion of Industrial metals like copper, CPER, which are outperforming precious metals like gold and silver. Cryptocurrencies are correcting. Will they find their mojo? Eventually they will, but there may be more pain left in that space. So be ready to take advantage of lower prices if you're in accumulation mode. And then we talked about all S&P 500 industry sectors, all 11 sectors being in positive territory with uh, energy and financials leading the way. So that's your big picture view of financial markets. Lastly, my public service announcement to all who are watching about your safety net. Keep in mind that a rising market as we have right now is the best time to carve out a portion of your overall investments for your margin of safety. Now, this is the part of your investment portfolio that offers capital preservation, liquidity, zero volatility. I've talked about it many times on this channel. I'm going to provide some links to you uh, on how that works and how to give yourself some protection in a market that is declining, in a market that's maybe neutral, in a market that's choppy. You always want to have an adequate cushion or margin of safety. You do that now from a timing perspective. This is the optimal time to do it, not in a market correction and certainly not in a a crashing market. And uh, if you'd like to find out if your portfolio is on track, maybe you're taking too much risk. Maybe you've got problems in terms of tax positioning. Maybe you've got hidden fees or other flaws in your investment portfolio. Well, you can get in touch with me at PortfolioReportCard.com. I'll be happy to analyze and grade your investment portfolio. So I hope you enjoyed today's program. If you have, leave your comments in the section below. Hit the like button. Don't forget to check out the links below in my description section uh, for online classes, the portfolio grading service. I've also got free eBooks. So I look forward to seeing you take advantage of all these wonderful tools. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Be safe, be healthy, invest wisely. And guess what? The profits are going to come running to you. We'll see you next time.